my New Year's resolution was to never buy a new vacuum again. Two weeks later, I caved in. What's going on everyone? It's your boy T, back again with two new vacuums. So this one's a cordless stick vacuum, and this one's a bag and a cylinder. Let's see what they're like. Let's start off with a cordless stick vacuum. So you can see the features on the box. I'm gonna unbox it right now. I must admit, for a budget little machine, it looks quite sophisticated. Oh cool, 45 minutes of runtime. So it's got a lithium ion battery, which is great to see. It's bagless, obviously. It's got a variable speed, fantastic. And a motorized spinning brush bar. And there's uh, information on the side. 150 watts from a DC motor. So it's not a brushless motor. It's got these standard traditional motors that you'd find in older cordless vacuums. Oh cool, everything's in the biscuit tray, but cardboard version. Ooh, brush bar. Let's see after the brush bar is all Please be safe. Mmm, okay. So here's the floor tool of the vacuum. You can see the brush bar in there. Underneath, the bristles are relatively decent. They're not too soft, not too stiff. They're just right. You've got a big fat monobrow on the back of it as well to help dust your hard floors and also prevent any scattering of large debris at the back of the cleaner head. So right here, there's a clip, right? You pull on that, a little cover just pulls off and then you can have access to your brush bar to remove it so you can clean it out properly when there's any hair wrapped around. Lock it into place and there we are. The power this thing consumes is only 10 watts. That's shockingly low. I'm hoping it's decent, you know. You've got a very flexible internal hose right here. I can see it is splitting eventually with use. Big fat roller wheel on the back along with two smaller ones at the front. And they appear to be rubber coated, so that's decent. The wand attachment. Yeah, nice metal finish. How well does it click in? That seems like a pretty secure fitting, to be honest. Yeah, I like that. It's pretty sturdy feeling. It doesn't stand up on its own, though, because if I let go, it falls back down. Here's an attachment. This is a two-in-one. That looks like the Dyson Gen 5 one, you know, in a way. So you got, like, a little, well, pretty wide crevice tool with a very tiny limb picker and also a slide down brush attachment. Yeah, these bristles are nice and soft. That would be nice for dusting. <laughs> I wasn't, you know, I'm not normally a fan of cheap vacuum attachments, but this one actually looks half decent. We've got the charger. There's the power information for the charger. So that looks like a wall mount. You got some screws in there as well. And the wall plugs. You got a crevice tool. That looks decent to be fair. It's a decent length. There's no airflow holes to leak suction out of. And it's also a click fit just like the other tool as well. So the tools won't fall off. All right, let's get the vacuum itself out then. Here it is. So there's the information label on the vacuum and an instruction manual. So according to the instruction manual, it states that it takes four to six hours to charge the battery for the first time. And you can use a vacuum for 18 minutes on high power and low power gives you 45 minutes. That's all I need to know. So Dyson cordless vacuums feel very lightweight compared to other cordless vacuums because of the even weight distribution on your wrist. But with this, it feels like a lot of the weight is in the battery right here. There's no added weight on the top, so it feels like the machine's being dragged down weight-wise. So to empty your vacuum, you press on the dust cup release button right here. Then you can pull off your bin, like so. Oh look, they've got a nice rubber flap in there, so no debris can fall out when the machine's switched off. Because when you have the vacuum on, that's going to be open, obviously, when the suction's working. But yeah, to empty it, you press on this catch at the front, and you've got a trapdoor opening like a Dyson vacuum. Nice metal shroud in there, that's great to see. So if you lift up on the cyclone unit, you can give that a clean even further. Here's your pre-motor filter. I like the look of that, you know. It's got some decent filtration by the looks of it. It's got a really thick rubber gasket around the perimeter, so it's going to be nicely sealed. No dust is going to escape past this by the looks of it. And it also looks like a dual cyclonic setup. So when the dirt enters the bin right here, you've got a cyclonic vortex action, capturing the dirt in the bottom of the bin, and any remaining fine dust that goes through the shroud right here, which is these micro little holes, then get separated out by a secondary cyclone inside. Can this be removed at all? No, not by the looks of it. See inside there, there's one cyclone in that. Two. Three. Is it three in total, I think? Yeah, I'm impressed with that. It's a dual cyclonic cordless stick vacuum. And in there's your big fat motor. It has to be a big motor because it's not a brushless motor. And then to put it back on, there's this little latch sticking out. You mate it up with this indent here, push it into place, and there we are. Ooh, so low power 
it feels quite weak, but you know, adequate enough at the same time. It feels like a, a almost like a Dyson V10 on low mode. And then for high power, oh, that was high power. No way. Okay, now it feels like I'm just, okay, now it feels like a very powerful desktop Henry vacuum. That is ridiculous. I thought high power was low power. A low power is going to be great for dusting, but nothing more than that. And high power. It feels like a Dyson V8 on low mode. Yeah. It seems to have more airflow than actual suction though. So what I like about this, you can change the attachment like so. It's literally that easy. It just feels really heavy. My arms are aching already. And you got this huge bulky handheld. But, you know, it is something. Let's see what it's like then. You got LED lights on the front. A marvellous addition to this fine piece of engineering. It's not too loud either. It actually does give carpet lines, impressively. There's already some dust in there. And I vacuumed yesterday. Well, last night actually, with the latest quarters, Dyson Gen 5. But yeah, let me just quickly go over this area. See what we can pick up. It seems to be picking up all right. There's only mild amount of surface debris and it seems to be coping just fine. See that? The brush bar power is actually quite decent. It feels like it's better than a Dyson DC35 actually. Let me go this kitchen carpet quickly. So low power is what we're using right now. It's extremely quiet. It's still picking up all the debris by the looks of it and also giving carpet lines. Do you know what? That brush bar is actually better than I thought. It's impressive so far. Now let's whack it on high power. Yeah, that's decent. Nice-ish. Yeah, it feels like it's competent enough it certainly feels like it's capable enough of doing the vacuuming, I must say. But this is just my blue carpet, anyways. Okay, so now that I've used it, I can say for a budget cordless vacuum, that's actually all right. It doesn't feel like it's got shocking build quality. It picks up all right. It seems to revitalize the carpet to an okay level. The tools are nice. I like the crevice tool and you got a decent dusting brush, but using it in handhold mode is going to be quite large. But yeah, that's a basic bush cord, the stick vacuum. Right, we're going to charge the vacuum now. So you just plug it into the rear of the battery right here. It doesn't look like you can remove the battery because it looks like it's molded onto the machine itself. So you can't actually store the machine elsewhere while you've got the battery going charge. You have to plug it into a nearby outlet. Okay, now let's take a look at the bin contents and the filter. Right, so picked up an all right amount so far. Look at this. So it's got some pet hair got some grit, fine dust, well, minimal amounts of fine dust. Not bad pickup wise. It's obviously dusty in there, isn't it? And I've not even chucked any dirt on the carpet. Now let's have a look at the filter, see if that's remained clean or not. It looks spotless at the moment. It seems to fit in there quite nice and snug. And it looks like here you've got a removable post motor filter. So if I twist on this upper lid, so the post motor filter is just a sponge ring. Right, let's unbox the cylinder now. I'm really excited for this one. So there's the hose attachment with the basic handle grip, banana shaped and also a suction control right here to reduce any suction. Oh, I don't like these attachments. Yeah, that's fit for the bin. Here's a two in one floor tool for carpets and hard floors. When you push down on this lever right here with your foot, it goes from carpet mode to hard floor mode by pushing down these bristles and also a rubber strip which goes in when it's on carpet mode. These wheels seem to be rubber coated, so that's good, but there's only two wheels. And you know what? I feel like this will stick to the floor quite well. I feel like this will perform quite well on carpet because it hasn't got the edge cleaning gaps that bleed suction out the edges for edge cleaning. So all the suction is gonna be focused into the carpet and therefore it will clamp down. Nice shiny telescopic metal wand. There's the information on that about filter maintenance and emptying the bin. So the hose goes in the front, obviously. 
feel quite secure to be honest. So here's a vacuum it's done. It feels pretty lightweight, I must say. So you remove the bin and cyclone by pressing this silver button on the handle. Emptying it is just like the cordless one. So you just press on this clear button right here. It won't open because it's brand new. Hold on. There we are. So that's how you empty it. I can see a lot of debris getting caught on these plastic fins though. So you're gonna have to really shake it out and maybe even tip the bin flap open a bit more because it is like a bowl shape. But here's your filter right on top of the unit right there. This is the cyclone. So a single cyclone design. The dirt enters the bottom of the bin, goes up here, comes out the hole on the side, spins around up this ramp in the cyclonic vortex, gets flung out to the outer walls of the bin and gets captured in the bottom of the bin. This is just like the Eureka power speed. So you pull on this. Wow, that, that was quite stiff. Okay, this was really stiff to pull out because of this nice rubber gasket around the filter. So here's your sponge filter. You can wash the inner casing as well with care. So the filtration actually looks all right on these. It's just the lack of secondary cyclone that bothers me about this. So in the motor inlet, you've got this very porous, useless little filter. And on the back, you've got a post motor filter. So you just open this grill up. There it is, there's a second clip. I'm glad these have rubber seals everywhere on the filters, that's good. And this is your cable rewind. Seems to be decent enough. Better than some Dysons are. Right, now let's see what this vacuum's about then. Okay, that's not as quiet as I was expecting. It is quiet, but not as much as I was expecting. Look at this. It actually lifts the carpet up because it has got the capability to stick to the floor. Yeah, I'm impressed with that already. Okay, now for a suction test. Let's see what these can pull on the water lift gauge. Barely pulls anything. And now on high power. 30 inches of water lift. 70 inches of water lift. Do you know what I would really like if this went with this? You've got a powered brush attachment on a decent cylinder. So you've got the suction of a cylinder vacuum with the power of a motorized brush bar. That would be fantastic. You're a tall person, this thing will give you back. Eh? The wand is fully extended and let's have to sit down low. <sighs> okay, look at the power of this thing. It can hold itself up to the wall. Look at the power of this thing. It holds itself up to the wall. And if I switch it off, it falls down. So I've got the vacuum plugged in right over there. Let's see how long the cable is. Come on, Bush. And that's it. I can only reach halfway through the kitchen. With further reach with this hose and one, just about reaching this door. I can't get any further than that. And these wheels make a lot of noise when I pull the vacuum around. Look, hear that? That is disgusting. So to summarize with this vacuum, great suction, but the wand is extremely short along with the hose. These wheels make a lot of noise. I've only used it once and I bet you the filter's dusty already. Yeah, see that? Disgusting. And it gives me backache. I don't like heat. But what I do like is you can actually park the floor tool and the one on the back of the hoover for convenience and storage. And as for storage, there's no tool storage for this little attachment on the hoover because they know you're going to bin it. So do your carpets and hard floors with this and hoover your stairs with just that. And that's the Bush bagless in the hoover.